shoot a holomorphic curve and have it on its own. Oh, yes, right, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, thank you. So um, I'm going to talk about um, <coughs> some new developments in results in um, low-dimensional Hamiltonian systems using pseudomorphic curves. So uh, I was going to start with this question of uh, Anatoly Katok. So he asks um, the following uh, uh, fairly general question. So in low dimensions, which uh, we're talking about dynamical systems here, so he says this means two for maps or three for flows. Are all conservative dynamical systems, so for example, area or volume preserving, uh, with zero topological entropy? Um, so, topological en entropy, of course, is a, a number between zero and infinity that sort of measures roughly um, <coughs> the complexity of the system. Uh, so, those with zero entropy, um, are they a limit of integrable systems? And he leaves it open for you to interpret, I suppose, what integrable means and what uh, limit means. Um, so, uh, so, roughly, how, 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 how ambitious is this uh, uh, statement? So, um, here is maybe what I'm imagining to be a typical integral system on a surface. This surface is just a disk. And there are some really um, uh, surprising examples on the disk. I'm going to talk about this. So, I'm thinking of an integral system as a system where you have a, a foliation of your space such that all the orbits remain within a single a uh, leaf of these, uh, this uh, singular foliation. Um, uh, even stronger would be one where this is actually, say, the, t the time one map of an autonomous Hamiltonian system. So uh, how crazy can maps with zero topolo topological entry be, be uh, say, on a disk that preserve the standard area form? So it turns out that there are ones that look like this, meaning uh, <laughs> they have a dense orbit. So there are ergodic examples. And this was discovered in 1970. So this is a theorem of Anasov and Katak. They showed that uh, there are actually smooth, air-preserving diffeomorphisms of the disk, which are ergodic. So that means almost every point of the disk is the initial condition of a dense orbit. Now, um, uh, given this, how might you imagine that this is going to be approximated by something so nicely organized before? Oh, yes, so these actually have zero entropy. Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, zero, topological zero topological entropy, yes, yes. So interestingly, they actually construct them as a limit of integrable systems. So what they do is they start off with something I'm going to draw as like this. So the schematically, this means uh, this is a rotation. So everything is staying, uh, every orbit starts on one circle, stays within that circle, and just rotating by some rational number, and there's a fixed point in the middle there. So they take one like this, and then they take another one, and this is moving at a slightly different irrational, uh, rational number, approaching some irrational number, and uh, they've conjugated their <coughs> rotation by, some, by something. So this is still conjugate to a, a put just a normal rotation, so it's uh, very nice in theory. And they're taking a sequence of these guys where they conjugate them by something that's behaving more and more wild. So each term in the sequence is still uh, actually just a rotation, but the orbits are getting smeared further and further over the entire uh, disk. And in the limit, they get something, so which I'm depicting like this. They have something, they actually get ergodic uh, examples, <coughs> even a weak mixing. So, um, so the question is, uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, so all of these examples they have that are ergodic are actually the limits of integrable systems. So as this question asks. So the question then is more generally, you know, can you always reverse this process? So given something potentially like that, uh, can you uh, actually um, go backwards? So now all of these uh, examples that are ergodic, the only known ones are ones that have only one periodic point, and that's why they have zero entropy. So you can sort of imagine if, if, if there are many periodic points, it's very likely you have one that uh, has uh, some uh, Diophantine rotation number, and then KM theory will tell you there are invariant circles nearby, and then it cannot have a dense orbit. So, um, so uh, uh, this is still not the only possibility, but 
Um, these are the only ones known. Um, so is such a map always a limit of maps conjugate to rotations even? So that would be a little more string, a stringent requirement than we originally asked, which is, are they the limit of integrable systems? So surprisingly, uh, using pseudomorphic curves this seems to be a way to um, actually reverse the process uh, I sh showed above. So supposing phi is uh, uh, an error-preserving map on the disk, so it's a conservative dynamical system, and it has only one periodic point, so it has zero entropy. And this class of maps contains all the known ergodic ones, as I said. So then there exists uh, a sequence of maps converging to this in the C0 topology, where for each n, this approximating map is conjugate to a rational rotation. Um, so in other words, uh, yeah, the, 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 so maybe I'll say uh, a few words about roughly where these maps uh, come from. That I don't know. Yeah. So there are two things uh, I would like to re resolve with this question. First of all, can, can this convergence is at the moment only in the C0 topology? And um, the maps come from foliations where you've got convergence in a, a C infinity sense. So it would seem like there's a good chance that it can get uh, maybe even the same regular, the same kind of convergence on these maps. But I still have to do more to see about that. And then uh, the question of whether these are area preserving. So mm, I'm still looking into this. And uh, uh, I think I know how to make the modifications to do that. But, um, but that's not clear yet. And then that would be a much nicer statement, yeah. Um, nevertheless, of course, each of these approximating maps, you still have a foliation on the disk by some sort of concentric circles getting more and more wild, such that the, the, the each approximating map preserves these circles, and yet the limit is still um, potentially ergodic. Right. Um, so ra briefly, um, where the maps come from is if you view this map on the disk as uh, coming from the time on map of a flow on the, on the, on the, on the <coughs> solid cylinder, then it turns out you can, f uh, I'm thinking of the flow as coming in from the left and out on the right. You can foliate this space by a singular foliation, by uh, a, a two-dimensional two foliation, by leaves like this. These are strips. The flow is not perfectly horizontal, but I've just drawn the strips to look like this, but really they are. Uh, uh, they're not products over, over uh, arcs in here. And um, you can fill up this space by such leaves. And these leaves come from holomorphic curves. They're not themselves holomorphic. This is a, an odd dimensional space. Um, but nevertheless, this is, uh, this is somehow where, where, where the maps are coming from. Uh, and these uh, relate nicely to the flow in that the flow is always transverse to them on, on the interior and on the boundary the, the, of these leaves, these are actually uh, tangent to the, to, to the flow. So, um, now, if, if you had a flow coming in from the left and out on the right that had only one periodic orbit, like these, uh, the maps I'm talking about, then any construction like this will look, a transverse slice would look like this, roughly, schematically. Right? There'd be just one periodic point in the middle there and uh, all the leaves would just connect the boundary to this. And this is um, basically where, uh, so it turns out that there's transverse to this, there's actually a sort of canonical way to get circles out of this. So these are sort of transverse to the, um, the, 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 this, this foliation and transverse to the holomorphic curves that I haven't really said where they come from, but <coughs> it's behind all of this. And these uh, also foliate the space. And you can construct then some uh, maps which preserve these circles and which converge to uh, your, your, your given map. And that's due to certain energy uh, decaying to zero. So uh, anyway, I won't have enough to say about that I, I yet. Um, so, uh, so none of the examples known, uh, uh, all of the examples known are, um, are known to be not strong mixing. So they're ergodic, and then a str slightly stronger uh, statement is weak mixing. 
and then even stronger is strong mixing. And it's known all the constructions are not strong mixing, but they can be made weak, weak mixing. So it's an open question. Uh, does there exist an air preserving disk map uh, with only one periodic point that uh, is actually strong mixing? And weak mixing was uh, done in many cases in the original paper by Anasov and Katak, and then uh, taken further by uh, Fayad and Seprekina more recently. And uh, all the examples that are known, they know are not strong mixing, but it's still open whether they even exist. Such you ones. Uh, what, sorry? One. Uh, what, I don't know what that means. So. Well, in your Godic, uh, in your Godic language, if you have one cell. Uh, uh, oh, I don't know. Okay. I'm sorry. Is it, uh, and also, Katar, is it, is it Stephen Kennedy? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. yes. So it turns out that this construction with the holomorphic curves, if the rotation number on the boundary of the circle map is sufficiently irrational, so this is a dense subset of, 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 of Louvillian numbers, then the holomorphic curves, their energy decays to zero so fast that you can actually approximate the, uh, the, uh, the flow for longer and longer periods of time, even as the iterates increase. And this enables you to show that these, these ones are not strong mixing. So um, uh, both of these theorems are still being written up. In so fact, they seem to have rigid theorems. Yes, actually, that's what it show. They're rigid, yes. Exactly, yeah. Um, and all the examples they construct are rigid. <coughs> and um, so several things I'm, I'm working on. So first of all, it would be nice to make this statement, uh, the theorem A I spoke of, and see whether uh, smoothness of, of the convergence can be established and whether these maps can actually be made error-preserving. So the whole thing is done in a symplectic framework, so you would have thought that um, this should come through. And I think I see where the error preservation comes from, but that's still being... Uh, details still need to be looked at. And then, of course, there's uh, more general maps with topological entropy zero. So uh, somehow you would imagine maybe that the biggest step is covering the ergodic ones, but um, this is still, um, I, I don't know how to do this. So more generally, you have these foliations, and if, say, you have a map like this, I mean, I've just drawn an integrable one here, then you can actually take any periodic point here, and you can actually find a foliation with... Um, in containing this periodic point, and, and, and generally there's going to be many, many periodic orbits in the foliation here, but you have some choice. And you could, one could imagine at least from this doing, playing a similar game to before and uh, constructing, obviously in, in general, not necessarily a, cha a change of coordinates, but say a Hamiltonian that's autonomous that can, uh, whose time one map converges to, um, converges to your, 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 your given map of zero topological entropy. So, so there's a lot of uh, uh, things to play with here to try and approach the general question. Um, and there are, there are more things that, that, that can be done that are not related to this question about disk maps uh, using um, this framework, and, um, uh, but I won't, won't talk about that uh, today. Okay, thank you for, uh, for listening.